Good morning. It is Monday, uh, June 16th, 2014. My name is Wes Hagen. I'm the vineyard manager and winemaker here at Club Pepe Vineyards and Club Pepe Estate Wines. Uh, welcome to the Monday Wine Blog. It's been two weeks. I hope you guys didn't miss me, or I hope you did, actually. And uh, today we're going to kind of back up and sort of summarize sort of what's been going on this year in 2014. So I made a nice little list so I wouldn't forget. It is early on Monday morning. So I want to talk a little bit about 2014. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the drought. I want to talk about the fact that we have a pretty good crop. I want to talk about that we had early, early bud break, uh, very early spring canopy, uh, the fact that we had a little bit of shatter in the vineyard and what effect that's going to have, and then sort of number six, which is sort of um, vintage happens, meaning uh, we're in California and we don't need to worry too much about uh, some of the things that are happening in the field right now. But I thought this would be a, a nice way to uh, sort of sum up what, so what can we expect for 2014 vintage, what have we seen thus far, and what still uh, is up to chance, and what still sort of is up to what, what, you know, what we really expect. So, uh, you know, this year we're obviously uh, in California, we're experiencing quite a drought. We've only had about you know, four or five inches of rain in the last 30 months. So they're talking about you know, El Nino coming up uh, in, um, uh, in winter, which would be great if we could get 20 inches of rain. We could recharge uh, the uh, water in the uh, ground and we could look at uh, having good water for uh, next year and subsequent years. So even though we realize we're in a pretty severe drought right now, we still have enough groundwater to get us through the year. So we're applying, you know, on average, probably about five gallons per plant per week. Um, fortunately, as I mentioned in earlier uh, pod or these uh, uh, video blogs, we actually did uh, save millions of gallons of water this year just as a result of not having to do frost patrol. So because we didn't have really many frost nights this year, um, we really probably saved five, six million gallons of water. So a good chance that uh, most of our water use this year will be covered by what we're normally used to uh, using in, uh, in years where we're having to do, um, use a lot of water to protect the grapes against frost. So the drought is going to have an effect. Generally drought years, I remember 2002, 2003, 2004. Uh, those years we had pretty minimal rainfall and we got some good rainfall before 2005. How does that really going to define the vintage? Probably small berries, small clusters. We can probably expect to see five or six clusters per pound. So we're looking at 70 or 80 gram clusters, tiny, tiny little clusters with a lot of skin and not very much juice. So I would say one thing we can expect this year is great color, great intensity and concentration. Uh, generally in these drought years, even when we're using irrigation, the berries stay extremely small, which means a lot of skin weight, not a lot of juice, and some amazing color and flavor in these wines. So number one, I think we can expect sort of a rich, right, you know, kind of a rich, um, you know, year that's going to show a lot of color uh, and a lot of richness. Now there is a good amount of crop out there. We weren't really expecting this year. Uh, 2013, we had great, great amounts of crop as well, almost three tons per acre in most sections, uh, or you know, here at Club Pepe, and, and I even heard about uh, other places around the Santa Rita Hills uh, seeing uh, very high levels of crop, four or five, even higher uh, tons per acre than that. So we're right on schedule to do about three tons per acre this year on average. Uh, but one thing right now, we're probably up about 3.1, 3.2 in some fields. So our plan is to get the rest of the vineyard uh, ready for netting here within the next two or three weeks. And then we're going to try to drop some crop. We're going to drop, once the uh, grapes start turning from hard and green to soft and purple in Pinot Noir, we're going to go through the last 10 to 15% that doesn't color up, that's still green and pink. We're going to drop that fruit right on the ground to make the rest of the crop perfectly consistent throughout the block. So when we, without doing that, we may see like 22, 23 degrees sugar in some of the, you know, percent sugar in the berry or bricks, 22 or 23 percent bricks in some grapes and 25 or 26 in others. And it may look like 24 in the fermenter, but we don't want the underripe flavor from the lower bricks and the overripe flavor to sort of fight in the wine. So we want a consistency uh, in the bin and in the fermenter, you know, trying to keep everything within one bricks of everything else per section per ferment. So that's going to be a big challenge, so we're going to have to get out there and drop a lot of fruit on the ground, and uh, that's something that uh, we do almost every year anyways. Uh, just a little bit. This year we may drop a little more crop than normal. So we had early bud break this year. 
So uh, the cats and the dogs are fighting behind me. Uh, early bud break was really, uh, we had a bud break, I think on the 6th of uh, March this year, which is some of the earliest bud break we've ever had. Of course, we were frightened that we were gonna see frost. Never really, uh, never really had much frost. We had uh, a nice warm nights. Uh, that's one thing that's been sort of nice this year. Normally we would have lost at least some crop someplace as a result of frost. This year we never even turned the water on. Uh, I think I turned fans on two nights, but the, uh, the weather was such that we never even had to turn the water on. So that, that was obviously very important. But that early bud break is going to give us a little bit of hang time on the early start of the season. So if we're two to three weeks early, which we're talking about, and we've heard about Verasion on the east side of the valley at Ampelos. We heard we've already, they've already seen a couple of berries. We've also heard about Verasion uh, last week up at Bien Nacido. So that normally says we got two weeks until Clopepi is going to probably see uh, Verasion in a cooler area because we are definitely cooler than uh, uh, Bien Nacido and Ampelos. So we're definitely going to see uh, about maybe uh, the first berry showing up within a week or two. So that's about three weeks early uh, from last year, which was also a little tiny bit early as far as the season goes. So uh, the take home message is we're gonna be probably harvesting sparkling wine somewhere around the third week of August, and we'll probably be picking Pinot Noir very close to the 1st of September, if not before. Now we're, we're bottling on the 27th of August, so is there a possibility that we're gonna pull in some fruit uh, and have some fr fruit fermenting from 2014 before we even bottle our two 2013 wine. That would be the first time we'd ever done that, but the goal is is to be prepared for an early harvest and keep our fingers crossed that we'll keep this wonderful cool weather that we've been experiencing in mid-June. So we've got this great June gloom, weather, uh, weather's been in the 60s, so even though it's getting hot in 90s in some places in LA, uh, and uh, you know all over the country we're seeing summer start to spring up we've had this wonderful sort of sweater weather up here with uh, fog and cool winds and with any luck we'll kind of keep this weather pattern going and uh, and keep this uh, keep this going on so spring canopy was the uh, number four uh, what I mean by spring canopy we've never seen such early canopy in the vineyard so we had a lot of early vegetative growth uh, and that canopy got up there really early which means it was absorbing sunlight and pushing the carbohydrates for growth and then basically changing over to uh, a gro you know from the vegetative growth to the uh, fruit ripening cycle a little bit earlier than we're used to so because it, it kind of exacerbates itself warm spring a lot of growth a lot of canopy that canopy is going to absorb a lot of sunlight and start the ripening of the fruit a little bit early. So we kind of had the double whammy, early bud break and then a very warm spring to get all that canopy um, up into the uh, trellising wires. So kind of the double whammy of um, early bud break and uh, a lot of spring growth means that we're even more advanced in our year. So again, uh, we will be ready to uh, bring fruit in if we get warmth uh, between now and August. We could be seeing pulling some Pinot Noir in August, but we're really hoping we'll extend that into the beginning of September. And then uh, number five, you can see 10% shatter. So during flowering, we had some winds. Uh, it uh, didn't allow every single berry uh, to um, set. So when you go to a cluster and you give it a little wrap, maybe 10% of the berries have been falling off. But that's not a bad thing. 10% shatter is going to open up the cluster and not make it so tight. It's going to open up the cluster to a little more sun exposure and a little more uh, improvement of flavor vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, sun exposure and the production of terpenes and the destruction of methoxypyrazine. So we're going to see less herbaceous character, less vegetative character, more high tone fruit character, and it's also going to shrink the weight of the cluster to give us less crop, more intensity. So we can expect this year, even though the crop load's a little bit high, because of a little bit of shatter, that is going to keep our uh, yields about 10% under what they would have been. So we'll go from about you know maybe 3.3 tons per acre to about 3 tons per acre. So uh, that shatter is going to help quality, uh, help sun exposure on all the berries, and um, hopefully help define the uh, the vintage as a vintage that's not about uh, dilution or overcropping, but uh, delicious small berries, delicious small clusters, a lot of intensity and a lot of flavor. And then number six, vintage happens. You can see even though we're sort of in a position right now where there's a lot of potential problems in the vintage, if we ever uh, really worry about 
Uh, problems in the vintage, I always remember what it's like to grow grapes in Spain or Italy or France where they have, you know, uh, hail storms and uh, tons and deluges of rain uh, during harvest. You know, we're, we're not really too worried. Uh, we're going to have harvest. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to make some beautiful wine. Uh, nature just gives us great grapes. So that's it. I uh, hope you guys had a great day. Uh, uh, have a great week and we'll probably see you next week uh, talking a little bit about vintage 2014. Uh, 